Hey guys, it's BT Gamer Girl 11 back with the pickups video, and we're gonna start with a letter that I got from a fellow YouTuber who I ordered a game off of on YouTube by the name of SNES OST, and he sent me this letter. And it just says read, and it says, "Hey BT Gamer Girl, you rock. Sorry for the delay, and hope you enjoy your new game." And what I got off of him for ten dollars was a game I've been looking to add to my collection for a while, and that's. Sonic and Knuckles for the Genesis. In really nice condition. It's got the top cover. And he also threw in a bonus and he stuck it in this little bonus slip thing, which I thought was awesome. And that is Victor Man for the Genesis. This is the best condition Genesis game that I have. Like, this looks like it's brand new. And the funny part about this is I was going to pick it up at a flea market, but I decided not to because I just had a feeling not to pick it up. I don't know why. So I went back home and I had a package in the mail and this was the bonus that was in SNES OST's package. So I was very happy to see this. So thank you to SNES OST and his link will be in the description below. At a flea market. Well, actually, let's start with the stuff that's not gaming related first, and then we'll get to the gaming related stuff. First off, I got a April 16th, 2007 Virginia Tech, like, remembrance bracelet, and it says, We Will Never Forget. And I got this because I use that We Will Never Forget saying a lot, so just kind of as a remembrance and a dedication to the victims, I picked this up for a dollar. I got this Virginia Tech book light is what it's supposed to be but I'm actually using this on my computer because it has a little clip thing right here and I can just clip it over my computer and it's got this LCD light warning it might blind you and this actually is somewhat helping my eyesight camera so I might be able to start using my eyesight camera more again apparently the lighting in my room is like off really bad and that's what causes my eyesight camera to make all the noise that it does so I'm hoping this will help it. Somebody recommended me to get like a book light and try to do that. So I bought this one for $8 from Walmart and hopefully this will help. It has helped a little bit, but I haven't got rid of the problem completely yet. Okay, now let's get to the gaming related stuff or to what I think is the gaming related stuff. First, I got a Space Invaders LCD game. This was a dollar, I believe. And I love Space Invaders, so I just decided to pick this up. And from Goodwill for 50 cents, I got this Sega LCD game. It's This guy is a character from Sonic, but I'm not sure what his name is. But basically it's just a fishing LCD game. And it came from McDonald's in 2004. But I like Sonic, so I just decided to go ahead and pick it up. trying to get it so you guys can see it but it's not playing as you can see that thing moving is a fish and you're supposed to like catch them without letting them get by you so just decided to pick it up because it was interesting also from Goodwill I picked up this trimmer pack for the Sega Dreamcast in box the box is not in the best of shape it's got this big tear in the back where somebody taped it probably when they opened it, but on the inside when you open it up, everything's in there, like the instruction booklets and all that stuff's in there, and it's brand new. So I thought this was a good deal because it was only $1.95, and I can use another one of these. Also from Goodwill, I picked up Wii Sports for the Wii for $2. It's complete. And this is up for trade, not this casing, because I actually bought my Wii used and I never got this casing. So I do have a copy of Wii Sports that I bought separately, but it doesn't have this package to it. So I'm going to keep this package, but the game itself and the manual is up for trade. So if anybody wants that, let me know. From a pawn shop for $0.25 cents each, I got Jack 3 for PS2. And none of these worked until my friend buffed them out. And now two of the three work, but the last one I will show you, I was actually going to put in the giveaway video if I can get it to work. But 
I cannot get it to work. I don't know what's wrong with it. So if anybody, you know, I, I'll probably just throw that last one away. So I'll show you when I get to it. But Jack 3 for 25 cents. NHL 07 for 25 cents. And this is the one that doesn't work. It's a Dragon Ball C game for 25 cents. But you can't beat 25 cents. And plus I need somebody that can buff them out for me. So these two ended up working after they got buffed. But this one didn't. I got a couple of NES games from the same pawn store. And the first one is Spot, which is basically in brand new condition for an NES game. And it was only a $1.99. And I got 10 yard fight with the label. It's kind of messed up up there if you can see it. But I did not notice that in the store, but that's okay because it was only 99 cents. I got three more NES games from a flea market, and they were three for $10 or $5 each. So I picked up three, but he did not have hardly anything that was interesting besides, like, sports games, and I didn't want sports games. So I picked up three that I thought were the best that he had left that I did not already have in my collection. And the first one is Excite Bike. has somebody's initials on the back. But other than that, it's in good shape after I wiped it off. It did have, like, this white stuff all over it, but I got all that off. Disney Adventures in the Magic Kingdom by Capcom. I got a lot of Capcom games, and I did not realize that until recently. And American Gladiators, with somebody's name on the front. But other than that, it's in good condition. I know that somehow you can get these names off with either Windex or a Magic Eraser, but I'm not sure exactly how you're supposed to do that, so if anybody knows how to do that, let me know so I can get the names off. And I got one more NES game, but this one actually came with a package deal that I'm going to show you at the end of this video as my epic pickup, and that is Super Mario Bros. 2, pretty much in brand new condition. And this is another copy, as you guys saw, my other copy was like really beat down. And I tried cleaning it, but for some reason I cleaned all my other NES games and they worked just fine. I cleaned that one and it decided not to work. Um, it didn't work from the start, obviously, that's why I tried to clean it to begin with. But it just never worked, so I'm glad to have this one, because this one does work. If I can ever get that other one to work, 49er Nation 1, so you know, I will let you know. I'm still working on that. From the flea market, I got Circus Mystery, The Great Circus Mystery, also made by Capcom for SNES. In good condition, just needs to be wiped down a little bit for $5. It's another game I wanted to try out. And also from the flea market, I got Izzy's Quest for the Olympic Rings for $3. Labels in not the best condition, kind of worn out. But other than that, it's in good condition and I picked this up because I played this game as a kid I played it on the SNES not on the Genesis but I beat it as a kid and I know it's not the best game in the world but I did like it as a kid so I wanted to re-add this back to my collection I paid three dollars for this I went to another store in Roanoke that I actually started to not like because they started to base all their pricing off of eBay and I think they kind of changed back to their old ways again, so I kind of like them again. But I picked up a Dreamcast game there called Trick Style. And it was $2.99. I've never seen this game before, but it's kind of like a mixture of snowboarding and skateboarding and like a urban environment type thing. So it looked really interesting, and I like snowboarding and skateboarding games, so it's in good condition. And I also picked up for PlayStation from the Tech Exchange, Pong, the next level. And it says it was $3, but I actually got it for $1.50 because it gave it to me for half off. And this is just another one of those games that I've always wanted to add to my collection, so I just went ahead and picked it up. The case could be in better condition, but the game itself is in like new condition.
from GameStop. I got Test Drive for PS2, the Greatest Hits Edition, for $179. Disc only. Disc only Cool Borders 2001 for PS2 for $0.90. Cents. I picked this one up because I plan on getting all of the Cool Borders for PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2. Just basically every Cool Borders that were invented for those systems that I have. So, I picked that one up. I got Spy Hunter for $1.99 for PS2, disc only, and also disc only MX World Tour featuring Jamie Little for PS2 for $0.89. Cent. At that pawn store that I was talking about, I also got this PS2 game, Wakeboarding Unleashed featuring Sean Murray for, I got it for $2 even though on the side here it says it was $1, but he didn't see that sticker, he saw this one. so. I ended up paying $2 for it, and I didn't realize it until after I got out of the store, so I was kind of already screwed, but that's okay. It was only a dollar more, so. It's got somebody's initials on the front of it that I need to figure out a way to get off. It's complete. It's got their initials there, too. I need to get off. And it's got, like, a coffee cup stain or, like, soda can stain or something from where somebody sit it on top of a manual, but it is complete, and it is actually a decent game. I've already played it. back to GameStop, I picked up three GameCube games because they were about to get one free, and the first one I got was the free free one, and the other two I paid for, and the first one is Tack the Great Juju Challenge, which was $2.69, and this was the one that I ended up getting for free, and I picked this up because I have a second one, so I figured I would add this one to my collection. It's complete. The disc isn't in the best of shape, it's got a lot of scratches on it, but it does play and work fine, so I've heard this is the best tack game in the series, so I haven't tried any of the tack games yet, but I'm going to play this one and the second one and see what I think of the tack games. I got Tube Slider for $2.99 for GameCube. Never played this game either, but I've heard really good things about it, so I decided to pick it up. Plus, I haven't seen this at, like, any other GameStop but the one that I was in, so. It's in really nice condition, and it's complete. And this next one, it doesn't have a cover, unfortunately, but it is a really good game. And it was $3.59, and it's Geist. Obviously, no back, because it's just a genetic case, which is why it's a little disc in a big disc spot, but Geist. Also, this one has a lot of little scratches on it as well, but it plays fine. I'm happy to get this game in my collection. I'm just hoping that somehow I can figure out how to print off cover work for the case and find a GameCube case I can stick it in. Because I do not like these generic cases, especially for GameCube, because it just doesn't look right. But I have used the cover project, but it seems like every time I print off a manual, not a manual, but a insert for the cover, off the cover project. It never fits the cases right for some reason, so I'm gonna try to find some other website to do that with. And one more GameCube game that I got off of eBay. It was originally seven something, but I ended up getting it for about six dollars because they gave me like a dollar fifty back for the manual being wrong. As you guys saw in my trade slash sell video, I had a Donkey Kong Spanish manual, and that is the manual they put in this game, which is obviously not Donkey Kong Donkey Konga. It's Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. And I got this game so I can test out the DK Boncos, plus I've been wanting this game for a long time. And it supposedly was complete, and when I got it, I opened it up, and Donkey Konga manual, Spanish manual, was right here. So, unfortunately it doesn't have a manual, but it does have the game in good condition. And I ended up getting this for about 6 bucks with the discount for the manual being wrong. From GameStop. The only, like, recent generation gaming pickup that I got was Bionic Commando for PS3 for $6.29. It's complete in like new condition. And I picked this one up because I need to add to my PS3 collection, and it looked really interesting, or at least it does to me. And I've never seen this game before, so I figured I would just try it out. Pretty cheap PS3 game. At the Dollar Tree, I picked up this Gugon for a dollar. 
And I've heard this stuff is good with getting stickers and like residue and stuff like that off of games and just different things. So I picked this up to test it out. So that's Goo Gone. From Walmart, I got a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, I believe, for like a dollar or twenty-five or something like that, around there. And I know you can use these to get like the mark markings off of your games and stuff, but I'm not sure exactly how to use them. So if you guys can let me know about that, that'd be great. And it came in a two pack, so that was a good deal. From the flea market, I picked up this multi-purpose lens cleaner. It comes with like these buffing, sorry, I cannot figure out the word, buffing devices there and there for your disc, and it comes with like cleaning solution and DVD slash VCD head care solution. I don't know what that's for, but I'm probably not going to use those two or that one, but I am going to use the little buffer things and a little tray thing to stick my disc in to make it easier to clean them with. So I figured I'd pick this up because it's only a dollar and it will come in handy for cleaning games. At Toys R Us for a dollar, I got this Gear Monkey remote holder for the Wii. It just holds your Wii remote and kind of makes it more into a controller. And this is like hard plastic. It might look like it's silicone, but it's not. It's hard plastic. So I'm not sure how comfortable it will be, but it was only a dollar. And I do sometimes play Wii games for a long period of time, so this might actually make it more comfortable. So I'll test this out and let you guys know. But it was only a dollar at Toys R Us, so if you're interested in that, go to Toys R Us. At the Tech Exchange, and this is probably my favorite pickup, even the last thing that you're going to see in this video, this is still my favorite pickup. And that is the generic GameCube controller, which is what they call it. But it's Pelican brand, as a GameCube controller, it looks like an SNES controller. Like the starting to select and the layout of the controller. It's orange, which is awesome, because it matches Virginia Tech. And I've never seen a GameCube controller like this before. I mean, it's got the L and the R up top here. All the buttons work really well. It's pretty much like brand new. I mean, it's not completely brand new, but I got it for $5, and I thought it was a really good deal. So, I picked it up because my GameCube controllers I'm having issues with, with the analog sticks. The C stick and the analog stick, just for some reason, for me, they break easily. So, I figured I would get this one because it doesn't have the analog sticks. And if I can get used to using the control pad, which I should be able to because the SNES controller is my favorite controller then I can use this one and not have to worry about the analog sticks and the C-stick breaking. So, I picked that one up. And I did get something else that I forgot to bring over here. So, hold on a second and I'll go get that really quick. Alright, sorry about that. I got for five dollars at Toys R Us this shirt with one of the Pac-Man ghosts on it. It's wearing headphones. It's blue. I just like it because I think it's awesome. And I plan on using this as like a undershirt or a nightshirt or something. It's too big. It's a large, but it's the only one they had. So. And last but not least will be the Epic pickup, which I have to go over here to show you guys. And that would be this right here, which is the NES system. It did not come with this controller. This is actually the controller that DVC Juggalo gave me. It came with this controller, which I don't know if you can tell on this video, but it's really yellow and it looks like a dog bit into it or something. I don't know. The buttons work fine, but it's in bad condition. So actually the control pad's a little bit stiff, but I don't use this controller, I use the one that DBC Juggalo gave me because it's in a lot better condition. But anyway, I got this for, actually I didn't pay for this, my friend got it for me for $25, it was originally $30, but he got it for $25 and it came with that Super Mario Bros. 2 game. And it's in actually pretty decent condition for an NES. The 72 pin connector actually, you know, like most NESs, has issues. But there's ways to kind of get around that with wiggling the game and stuff like that. So, it does work. There's not a game in it, so it's going to blink. But it does work pretty well. And it's nice to have because I still am going to keep my retro entertainment system as a backup. But with the NES, 
you can play all the games on it. You don't have to worry about compatibility issues. The only problem I'm having is I have like a humming issue with the, I don't know if it's the power supply because it's not the real power supply or if it's the system itself or my TV or what it is, but it is making a humming noise like every time I play a game. So if you guys know anything about that, let me know. I did actually pick up a NES adapter. If you guys give me a second again for the NES that my friend actually got for me and he actually ended up paying $12 for it which they're apparently hard to find now but I did get one of those to see whether or not it's coming from the power supply or if it's coming from something else sorry about all the noise in the bad video but here's the power supply that I forgot about so I'm gonna plug this in and hopefully this will eliminate the humming noise, but I'm not sure. So if you guys know anything about that, let me know. So that is all of my pickups. I know it's a mess over there now, but thank you guys for watching. I know this video was extremely long, and I had so much that I kind of forgot a couple things, so I had to go pick them up and bring them over here, so I'm sorry about that. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you for all your support. If you haven't checked my 200 subscriber giveaway video yet, please do. And thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.